Test, 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 test. Sound okay? Ronnie, can you hear pretty well? Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Thanks.
There it is. Good morning, dear ones. For our fathers out there, for our father types, for people who have assisted in communal rearing of children and young ones, a very hearty Father's Day to you all. So Father's Day and fathers are not just blood. I think we have come to understand and realize over these years. So for those who have served an important role in the rearing of children, we are so grateful for you and your roles. My name is Pastor Bryce, and on behalf of Pastor Renee and Melanie and Jean and our tech team and everybody else who goes into making this morning happen, we are so grateful to have you with us. Pe uh, Sister Tashina and a herd of youth, plus Sue Fairchild and Chris Danielson, are currently that way about four and a half hours in the Quad Cities. Um, we pray for their time on their mission trip, and we pray that their space away together will be fruitful, will be filled with service and connection. Uh, donuts this morning, immediately following worship, outside, will be uh, staffed by our governing board. We are so excited to have them. In fact, they were so eager to do this. Normally, most governing board emails include Pastor Renee, myself, and Sister Tashina on the threads. This, this thread was absent your three pastors because they wanted to take this on their own. Uh, over the next several months, our donuts will be led and facilitated by our various groups uh, as an opportunity for us to intentionally engage with those groups and to learn more about what they do. And if any of the groups out there that you meet and, dis and talk with pique your interest, I know that every single one of them is looking for someone that could be you. So bear that in mind as you are chatting with them. Vacation Bible School and Youth Camp will be July 18th through the 21st. Vacation Bible School will, will run 9 to noon. Youth Camp will run 9 to late afternoon, early evening. Youth Camp is for middle school and up. VBS is ages 3 years old through 5th uh, grade completed. We are looking for volunteers for those programs as well. I've announced this a bunch. You, you can look in your bulletins for more information about that. Our book studies, uh, Jesus and the Disinherited, which is a book by uh, Howard Thurman, um, will be running after our uh, 11 or 10 o'clock service next week. next week. And then our, what is? Yes, just take a look for the book study information in your bulletins. You, we've been talking about it. All the books have been taken, but there is still space for you to order and to join into the discussion. Pastor Renee, you have an announcement. Um, so we are updating our constitution. You're going to hear this ad nauseum until we get to our uh, annual meeting. But the updating is necessary, and we have two documents printed out for you in the Welcome Center. It was also sent to you in an email. In our efforts to be extremely transparent as to why we're doing it, we have this, first of all, this is the document where it's uh, highlighted at the top, and it says draft revision that we're going to be voting on. And then another one that has these three columns is the one you're really going to want to pay attention to because it has existing language, which means what our current document says, proposed language or something we might be admitting or omitting out of there, and then the rationale as to why we're doing it. We do, there's no sneakiness here. We're, we're trying to update it, uh, bringing in the constitutional, the ELCA constitutional uh, amendments in there and also things that are just outdated and not part we did m mostly what we did is rearrange things but we want you to be aware of what's happening so these are printed out for you we're going to start having forum conversations for you to ask questions as to why we're doing things in a couple weeks but if you'd like to print one off at home you got the email otherwise there's some copies for you in the welcome center as well Thanks, Pastor mm -hmm. Renee. The dates and times for those conversations are in your bulletin as well. We have great conversation about these constitutional changes. However, we want to make sure that we have as much space for those conversations to happen. And unfortunately, our annual meeting, it seems like time is pressed. So please, if you have any desire to engage in that conversation, look for the time in the bulletin so you can join in the conversations there. Before the annual meeting. Uh, let's see here, two last, one, two last announcements. Lunch on the lawn. We will be out on the lawn on Tuesday about 11.30 until about 12.30. Come and join us, bring a lunch, and uh, 
hang out there. It's going to be really toasty so your food won't get cold. Uh, and then also, uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m., coffee and bagels at the Little Canada Caribou where we have been meeting for the last many, many months. Did I miss anything? Wonderful. I invite you all to take a deep breath in with me and let it out slowly. Breathe in and out. Center yourselves. Bring yourselves into a space of worship with our God. And as you are doing that, think about the barriers that we have put in place that keep us from going to other people. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to share the peace of Christ with those that you have arrived in worship with and a sign with those around you. God's peace, beloveds. God's peace. Now, dear ones, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you are able for our gathering song, All Are Welcome, hymn number 641.
Let this house proclaim from a floor to rafter. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By, the, by grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin from a selfish passion. voices together with a prayer of the day. Open our hearts today, O Lord, to feel the powerful strength and love you have for us. Help us to listen, not only with our ears, but with our spirits for your words of compassion and healing. Enable us to become more faithful disciples for you. For we ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. The reading from today is from the book of Galatians, chapter 3. Verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. 
But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Children's message. All right, how many people here have heard of the uh, show, <laughs> show Extreme Makeovers? All kinds of different ones. On the house, Extreme Makeovers on people, Extreme Makeovers on cars. Well, I have a couple pictures here, and you guys always sit way back there, and you guys at home, you have to look at this. So this is an Extreme Makeover of a home. The bottom one is the before. Like, you can't even tell that they're the same place, right? Here, I'll grab my other ones quick. All right, you can see, look at this. Like, wow, such a difference from the first and the other one, right? Okay, now here's one. <clears throat> here's one. Uh, uh, this sometimes looks like, I have four dogs, so this looks like my living room. The top one right there. Look at the bottom one. Look at how different that is, right? <laughs> it's amazing from beginning to end. Now this one, I thought Henry would be interested in this one. The top one is a car. Look at the bottom one. That's what they made it into, right? Pretty amazing. You guys at home, I'll show you this. This is the car. The top one is they found that car, and then they turned into that on the bottom. Kind of amazing. Now, I showed you those pictures because it seems almost impossible that they went from that one, you know, the starting, the before to the after picture. And that's part of the story in those shows is you get to hear the before and after story. And we hear the story that Pastor Bryce is going to read in, in just a few moments about Jesus also doing what seemed like the impossible, like breaking all the boundaries of what could possibly be. Like you can't even envision that this can go to that. And we have somebody in our story, a guy that was uh, uh, um, plagued with demons. It's just this, it was really sad because they had to chain him down and kind of keep him bound up and they kind of tightened boundaries around him and what he could and couldn't do. And Jesus comes into this story and breaks all those boundaries and rips them down and sees this guy for what he can be. So he might, some people might see this when they look at that guy, but Jesus sees that. And that's what Jesus' love does for this guy in our story. And Jesus' love can do the same thing for you, can transform you from the inside out. So, because when God looks at you, God sees, God sees that the world might see that but god always sees that and so our story here that bryce is going to read is about how god jesus enters the story and god brings us love and transforms this guy into this into what god can see him into this new brand new shiny person that can now share that love with the world will you pray with me holy god we thank you that you see us as loved that you see us as a person belonging to you and not as the world can sometimes see us. Help us to be open to that changing and transforming love that can take us and turn us into those shiny beings that you know we can be. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able for our gospel acclamation.
Our gospel text for this morning comes out of the book of Luke, the 8th chapter beginning in the 26th verse. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him, and he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order him to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then the people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they themselves were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you, beloveds, from God our Creator and from Jesus our Savior and Redeemer. How good it is to be called into this work with you, and I rejoice that we do not go at it alone. Let us pray. Holy God, giver of all good and from whom all blessings flow, may you grant us pause for this time and open us up to hear your word of grace spoken. May our hearts be stilled and our minds be cleared and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our, all of our hearts be ever-pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have laws, right? They are an important part of our lives. But why? Why are laws, non-rhetorical question, friends, why are laws important? To keep order, to stop what, Kathy? To stop chaos, to keep chaos at bay. Absolutely, those are exactly right. They allow us to act rightly according to our penal code. But however, not all laws make sense. And even more now, seemingly, not all laws are smart. Did you know that there are websites dedicated to dumb laws? For instance, did you know that in the city of Wayland, Minnesota, anyone can keep their cow on Main Street downtown at the cost of three cents a day? And did you know that in Gainesville, Georgia, this one is an important one for me, it is illegal to eat fried chicken except with your hands because they take their fried chicken real seriously down there. And for our pet owners out there, I look directly at Pastor Renee, it is illegal in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, for dogs to bark after 6 p.m. Wolf. Yes. All 
these things get me thinking about our text this morning. Things and laws make sense until they don't. See, this morning, Jesus enters the the land of Gerasenes. And there are a couple of things that are worth noting in this text that I feel like are worth downloading to you. First, we know that this city existed outside of Judea and Galilee. In fact, in this space being opposite of Galilee, it was firmly planted in Roman territory. Second, I've always found it fascinating that this text has a herd of swine so prominently featured in this text. Because of these things, we can infer that this place that Jesus was in was likely not Jewish, was likely not inhabited by primarily Jewish people, making it presumable that this town was likely not a space that would have been friendly to Jesus or to the beliefs of the Jewish people. It would have, at that time, been considered an unclean place. We've thrown that word out before, unclean, when talking about customs and things like that. But what does unclean place mean? Well, the Jews, in antiquity and even now, today, have laws that dictate how they are to encounter people of different faiths, of people like them, how they are to encounter the environment in which they dwell, what they wear, what food they eat, and how it's prepared. In fact, they have well over 600 of these laws. But maintaining a part of this practice allows them to keep what is called kosher which is part of their meal preparation. And cleanliness laws dictate even the people that you should avoid because they are not Jewish, because they are ill, because they are possessed, and so forth. Now, this was done as a way to preserve communal sanctity, or to put it another way, the community's holiness so that they might stay right in their worship with God. Because we know in this story that there were pigs, that they weren't in a land of Jews, and that Jesus was near a demoniac. All that being said was that this place was an unclean place for Jesus. And uncleanliness was contagious. Non-Jewish city, swine, a demoniac. Jesus hit the uncleanliness trifecta, friends. All right, long explanation over. Come back in if you were starting to doze off. And a complete aside, the reason why I offered that is that the Bible is intense. The Bible is fascinating. And the Bible is riddled with complexities that are almost impossible for us to literally view with our 21st century lenses. And I spent well over 217 words of this sermon, I did a word count in Microsoft Word to tell me that, discussing the cleanliness laws of the ancient world, and I did that because not all of us have that frame of reference. But yet this frame of reference is exactly what Jesus disembarked the boat with in that first verse. 217 words that I spent discussing something that Jesus knew at every fiber and core of his being. And I would encourage you to bear that in mind as you encounter the Bible in its fascinating and intensely filled scriptures. Know that there is so much more happening beneath the surface. Back to it now. So Jesus meets with the demoniac. And upon seeing this person heals them. No pomp and circumstance. No draw everybody in so you can see what is going to happen. No huge discussion or teaching and using this person as the object lesson. Just sees him, casts the demons out, then sits with him, presumably gets him clothing, and talks with the person. That's it. Jesus, in a foreign space and stepping out of the barriers that were in place, 
to an entirely or a wholly unclean person, Jesus then sacrificed his own perceived cleanliness to heal this person. But why? Because Jesus saw the need and went to it. We are great at constructing barriers that keep things out. But if we're being honest, the barriers I think that we construct, we as a society, we communally, we individually, construct barriers that are better at keeping people out than things. But barriers become different things over time. Eventually, if enough people get behind these said barriers, these barriers become laws. Sure, laws serve as an almost curb that keep us on the right path as we venture down the road of life. Laws help us to preserve community and uphold life. They are important. They make sense. Until they don't. I've been thinking all week about barriers and what kind of a barrier can I tangibly offer in this? And then I read an article by the Pioneer Press this last week. And I'm from the other side of the river, and so I'm a Star Tribune guy, so for me to read from the press is saying something. But anyway, this, this, this piece from the press spoke and wrote about St. Kate's University partnering with a nonprofit in uh, mapping the racial restrictive covenants that took place in properties from the end of the 19th century until the early or late 60s, rather. And if you're not familiar with what racial restrictive covenants are, they were an official legal tactic that were used across the nation to prevent persons of color and other minoritized racial and ethnic groups from purchasing homes or living in residential areas designed to be white communities. As we stand here on June 19th, Juneteenth, as it is known to many of our siblings, we are reminded yet again about how our own biases and prejudices permeate into so many of our spaces and places in which we dwell. We live in Ramsey County. This group is mapping those covenants in Ramsey County. You see, after the abolition of slavery, when persons of color began earning for themselves, steps were taken to keep them out of certain places. Hence these restrictive covenants. And these covenants didn't hit the books until the end of the 19th century, a couple of decades after slavery had ended. And if you're wondering what some of these uh, covenants might have looked like, you weren't alone, because I wanted to figure it out too. And gratefully, St. Kate's shared some of those. No person or persons except those of the white race or pure blood may acquire, own, rent, or occupy the whole or any part of parcel of said premises. These premises being conveyed shall not at any time be conveyed, mortgaged, or leased to any person or persons of Chinese, Japanese, Moorish, Turkish, Negro, Mongolian, or African blood or descent. This property shall never be deeded or occupied or by a colored person, and if so deeded or occupied, it shall revert to the said parties of the first part. Bear in mind, beloveds, we live in Ramsey County. We don't have to go very far to find where these covenants were enacted. The Civil Rights Amendment in 1968 abolished those and made them illegal and unenforceable. But we are so stinking good at crafting and creating barriers that whether we intentionally or otherwise seek to limit the movement of the Spirit and the sharing of God's love, we get in the way. And now we know that God's love is not shown or quantified by a home ownership. We get that. We know that. But by keeping these neighborhoods white, kept the home values higher, meaning that those neighborhoods garnered more money for those homeowners, making financial uncertainty and lower 
lower-priced homes in other communities more prevalent. And we know that where poverty exists, crime often, not always, but often follows. Hunger comes, unemployment enters, and so on and so forth. It becomes a systemic thing that takes generations to mend and to get beyond. And that's just one barrier. The man in our story was likely not Jewish and by all accounts should have been dismissed by Jesus. But Jesus' actions in this text were deafening. A so what to the authority. Jesus did so much than just heal this person on that day. Not only did he restore this person's health, but he made it possible for him to rejoin the community and experience life again with them. Together. And what's more is that Jesus showed us here and then that God's love, and this is the crux, beloveds, God's love doesn't know barriers. To put it another way, there is no one that exists outside of God's love. There is no human clause that can uh, prevent this from happening. There is no, but they are, or they did, or that person does. God's love is literally for all, an unconditional love that goes beyond any conditions we would place on it, period. End of story. However, as amazing as this love is that our God has for us and demonstrates for us time and time again, it is scary. It is scary. Because that love that God has for us is for everyone. And that means that sharing that love means sharing it with everyone no matter what. It calls us to the wrong places and to the wrong people. Like Jesus on the other side of Galilee, it takes us to the other side of those proverbial tracks, to those people. It means that God's love comes to both a victim and offender. It means that the people we can't stand and the people we like are loved by God. It means that the person asking for money on the corner of Mounds, Kellogg, and 94 exits are loved by God, even if I don't incline my gaze to them. It means that our siblings of different faiths and practices are loved by our God as well. See, dear ones, barriers mean nothing to God. Jesus walked through them. In fact, Jesus destroyed them as he went through them so that love might be felt. In preparation for this this morning, I read a piece from Dr. Terrell Carter, who was also on a podcast that I was listening to, And he wrote that the people that we are called to love do not need others to run away from them or to lecture them. But instead, they would benefit from others running toward them and being willing to sit with them and to help where possible. Beloveds, may we run towards them. Barriers be darned. Amen. Now, dear ones, I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the song of the day. Praise the one. storms and feeding thousands with the 
marching first in every land. Praise the one true love incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose for many, that we Join our voices together with Christians around the globe as we profess our faith as recorded in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Are there any prayer requests that you would like to lift up this morning? Be thinking about those other prayers that you didn't lift up. We'll have space in our prayers for you to offer those to God at that time. Wherever you are right now, take a moment to feel God's presence and center yourself in that joy. God of breaking boundaries, as you continue to stretch and push our understanding of boundaries, Help us to see who are the ones that are imposed by those boundaries and excluded. And help us to widen our circle to include all the ones that you love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the whole world, we keep scrolling through the news and forever clicking from catastrophe to exhilarating trauma over and over and over again. Make us stop. Force us to take a break. Teach us how to breathe. Show us how to behold rather than barrel through your world. And give us ears to hear and eyes to see you in all of this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all the people, on this Juneteenth day, we commemorate the end of slavery in America. This day partially remembers, or reminds us of the progress that we've made. This day also partially reminds us of the progress we have not made. We celebrate the freedom of black lives in our nation. 
We also grieve that we have not correctly reconciled racism in our nation. We ask you to guide us. And also soften our hearts to welcome all people of all color and sexual orientations and gender identities and gender expressions. Teach us to learn and relearn with humility and excitement that all are loved by you, period. And may the good news of the gospel motivate us to love each other. May the ideals of our words match the practices of our lives. And may fresh empowerment of your spirit unite us together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we give thanks for this magnificent planet and for teaching us the importance of caring for it. We praise you for your creative work in this world's beauty and diversity. Help us always remember that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for the people that call out to you for healing in so many ways. People that struggle with grief and mental health and isolation. We lift up to you the names of people that are struggling with so many things. We lift up to you Gracie, Jeff, Jason, Julie, Jim, Dave, Doug, Bev, Margaret, Ryan, Steve, Lydia, Kathy, Zanea, Wayne, Wendell, Eldon, Judy, Jay, Pastor Michelle, Elopement family. We lift up to you, Nick, as he is struggling in a coma. We pray for Todd as he is making a big move today. May that go smoothly. And we lift up to you, Anne, who is continuing to battle cancer. And be with the Mao family at the death of Mike's dad, Leo, at 102. Surround them as they revel in the memories of Leo being a great dad, yet feel the loss as they say goodbye. Send your healing spirit to rest mightily upon those people and to all those that we name in our hearts. And Holy God, we now lift up to all those prayers, those silent prayers. We lay them in your hands at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mission work everywhere, we lift up to you all the work of the ministry partners that uh, make this world a better place to reflect your love. We are grateful for the impact that they have made. We pray for our ministry partners of Open Hands Midway, Ralph Reader Food Shop, and Holy Hammers. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Kitamali, Tanzania, as they pray for us each week. And we pray for all of our kids on our mission trip with Sister Tashina and Sue and Chris. We pray that their work will be fruitful and their lives will be impacted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, forgive us when we fail, pick us up when we fall. Sustain us when we doubt, guide us when we fear. Embrace us when we cry, laugh with us when we have joy. And that it help us do the same with those that we meet, those that we know, and those that we encounter every day. Help us to actually exhale your mercy that others may inhale your love. Holy God, let this be so. Amen. Now we're entering a time of giving. Um, we are not yet passing the basket. I suspect we'll start doing that soon, but if you uh, give in a basket way, they're all over the place in the back. If giving online is more of your thing, uh, you can go to sohsv.org. Plenty of places to give that way. And we say every week, if you would like to give of your time, we would love to connect with you, have a cup of coffee, and figure out where we can help you plug in to here at Things at Shepherd. And as always, everything that we have and everything that we are belongs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
you join me in a moment of offering prayer, please? Gracious God, as your love brought us healing, may our gifts be used to heal. As your sacrifice brought us salvation, may our sacrifices be used to save. As your offering feeds our souls, may our offering feed the hungry. And as you willingly gave of yourself, may we faithfully give of ourselves. Amen. We're going to be entering a time of Holy Communion. Please know that everyone is welcome at this table. We always say that because these are the gifts of God for the people that God loves. People at home, you can make ready your little elements as well of bread and wine. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And let's pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite the communion host forward. If you will be taking communion in your seat, please know that you can do that now because the body of Christ has been given for you and the blood of Christ has been shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join our voices together with our sending song. Let's do, just do verse one at this point, just to verse one. Uh, oh, a thousand tongues to sing. As you go in peace, may you burst through those barriers that we have created so that you may share the love of God and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 